So I was thinking about something earlier. The word emotions, right? Most of the word consists of motion. In between the E and the S, motion, meaning movement, uh, fluidity, dynamic shifts, ebbs and flow of energy, most like movement. It's a, like things are supposed to change when when they're in motion. An object in motion stays in motion. You know, inertia. Shout out high school physics. So when I when I thought about it, I was like, yo. Human emotion, it's supposed to change. It's supposed to be dynamic. Me understanding how my mind works and how I feel and how I express how I'm feeling to others, it's it's supposed to be a fluid process. It's supposed to be a dynamic process. It's not, it's, it's not designed to be stagnant or it's not designed to be just one thing constantly, all the time. And the more I think about it, it's like, yo, I need to let my emotions ebb and flow. Like there are gonna be times when I, I, I'm not feeling it. Like I don't wanna talk to people. I ain't really, you know, chipper and joy, joyous and ready to go. But then there's gonna be times when I got all the energy in the world and I can't wait to go do this and the third and be with my friends and family and be, you know, be in the mix for real. But I also took that that point of emotions and I, I attached it to the analogy of driving on the freeway. So let's say I'm driving on the freeway, right? Expressway, highway, however you wanna call it. And for specifics, let's say I'm driving on 95 North from Raleigh, North Carolina to Baltimore City, Maryland. Let's just say that, right? There's times on 95 where the minimum anybody should be driving is 70 miles per hour, which is pretty fast. And I thought about it as if my emotional state, like my mind, as the freeway, and I think about all the cars as like different emotions or different uh, stimuli that would cause me to respond in a specific way emotionally. So on a freeway, 70 miles per hour, Everything is supposed to be going fast, right? Everything is supposed to be smooth. Everything is supposed to be fluid. It shouldn't be no start and stop traffic. Now, I equate that to my emotional state being, you know, in the mix. I'm, I'm flowing, everything is good. I have a clear headspace. I'm in a good place, you know? But then, Imagine I'm I'm driving or somebody's driving on that freeway and then they stop in the middle of the freeway or specifically they stop in the far left lane, which is the fast lane. Traffic jam, so accident, somebody explosion, somebody going to lose a life, somebody going to die. I'm not even going to hold you. Come on, I really think about traffic jams and how that works. Anytime traffic is moving slower than usual on a freeway, there's a problem. So now I equate that to my emotional state. So let's say maybe I'm supposed to be, like, maybe I'm in a social context or in a social space where I'm supposed to be like in the mix and chipper and happy and joyful and, you know, expressive and I'm not. Let's say there's a traffic jam. Let's say that I'm just not feeling it. I'm not excited. I'm not happy to be in that space. 
and maybe there's just a, an emotional traffic jam because like there's slow movement, slower than typical, or there's no movement, it's stagnant. Like I'm emotionally, I'm emotionally constipated. Like it's, something is a little bit off. So when that happens, emotionally, internally, that is also showing externally. Like people can sense it if they're paying attention or the way I express myself may not be typical and people can sense that and they'd be like, hmm, something's a little bit off, is he okay? But understand that even on the freeway, whenever there's bumper to bumper traffic, there's stop and go, there's heavy congestion, or there's just straight up, the freeway becomes a parking lot because of something tragic that happened. Eventually what happens? Once the dust settles, all of the confusion clears up and everybody is back to moving again, then the freeway picks back up in speed and everybody can go on about their way, which on the freeway, that's how that works after, after an accident is cleaned up. Same thing happens in my emotional space. Once I get past a rough patch, a speed hump, uh, a dark place in life, and by dark I don't mean like insidious or evil, I just mean sometimes a dark space can just be a space of uncertainty. Where like when you're in the dark, you, you, you're not sure what's gonna happen next. You, you can't, you can only control but so much when you don't know where you are or what's in front of you or what's behind you. So, bringing it all together, like I'm learning more about how my emotions work and then also how to have empathy for other people and understand how their emotions work and how sometimes it can be stop and go traffic for somebody else. Sometimes it can be heavy congestion for somebody else. Sometimes it can be, oh, Smooth sailing, everybody pushing 75, 80, 90, 110 miles per hour on the freeway. And it's all, you know, it's all good. So, key points. I'm learning that my emotions are supposed to move. They're supposed to ebb and flow. They're supposed to change. And it's okay. Another key point, understandably, there are situations where people may be emotionally imbalanced and that could be because of a, like a, a mental imbalance. And it can be where, you know, medication might be necessary to help with that. And that's, that, that goes along with like mental health and emotional health and understanding that our brains are very complex freeways and a lot can happen up here whether we want it to or not. Another key point, I'm learning to be more empathetic for other people and their emotions and letting people emote however they see fit, however they're used to emoting. Now, sometimes that can be a dicey situation. Sometimes it's not the best way to emote, but sometimes people don't have any other way of processing their emotions and they're just doing the best that they can with the tools that they have. And that's a very difficult thing to reconcile sometimes, but I'm, I'm learning how to process it where it's like, just because somebody doesn't meet my expectations for how they should feel about a situation don't mean that they're inherently wrong for how they feel. So it doesn't mean that I'm inherently right for how I feel slash how I interpret how they're feeling or how they're emoting. So I'll leave you with this. Let your emotions move. Let them ebb and flow. Let them be fluid. And also extend grace to others and allow their emotions 
to move and be fluid.